Jaden Daniels, NFL superstar quarterback. Not many thought that was going to happen, but it has. We'll talk about it today on Locked On NFL. The barbershop is open and Tony Wiggins has a chair for you. He's ready with some real NFL talk. The local experts of Locked On bring their expertise. And Wiggy is ready with his clippers and shears. Sit down and enjoy. The new Locked On NFL starts now. Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, welcome in to the new Locked On NFL, bringing you a double dose of the NFL's biggest stories with the help of our local experts that you know know your favorite teams like no one else. I am the host of the Barber Shop, the Barber Tony Wiggins, joined today by Locked On NFL expert Kevin Ostriker. On today's episode, here's what we're going to talk about, man. We're going to run this stuff down for you, right? Malik Neighbors is as good as it gets. We'll look at him and Mark. Harrison Jr. and tell you why scouts were right to kind of lump them together. Right in the middle of the show, Josh Allen is MVP through three games, and the Bills look like the team to beat in the AFC East. And we're going to start it out talking about Jalen Jaden Daniels being the superstar quarterback that he appears to be, and what's the difference between him, how he was handled, and Caleb Williams. Mm, very, very interesting stuff. Uh, we appreciate you for making us your first lesson of the day for being an everyday here on Locked On NFL, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure to tune in again on Locked On NFL tomorrow morning for the madman Tyler Rowland for more NFL coverage. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. That's right, man. FanDuel, where you make your first $5 bet, and guess what's going to happen? You're going to get $200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com to get started. Kevin Ostriker, I know a young superstar quarterback in the making when I see one, and the dude that's about 40 minutes down the beltway from you isn't the guy I'm talking about. Well, no, the other is actually who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jaden Daniels as opposed to sitting here talking about Kayla Williams. Jaden Daniels looks like he is the good, doesn't he? Whew. I'll tell you, that throw late in the game to seal it for the Commanders, one of the best throws I've seen under pressure from a rookie quarterback in a long time. I mean, the poise, the ball security, protection, he's not making poor throws, he's making smart decisions. Man, the Commanders got a good one. Yeah, and he's calm, cool, and collected. My man David Harrison was had boots on the ground last night in Cincinnati. Listen to what he said after the game. It was supposed to be the Cincinnati Bengals get right game. Instead, it turned out to be Jaden Daniels coming out party. This is David Harris on the Locked On Commanders podcast. 38 to 33, the final score in week three, Monday Night Football. The Washington Commanders come into Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio, and go home two and one. Meanwhile, the Cincinnati Bengals are 0 and 3. Jaden Daniels, two touchdown passes, one touchdown running. Brian Robinson, Austin Eckler, another touchdown run. Uh, themselves and perhaps the biggest story Terry McLaurin getting his first touchdown catch of the year 100 yards on four catches total for the night including a 55 yard touchdown bomb from Jane Daniels to seal the win and of course wide receiver one Trent Scott offensive tackle getting his first career touchdown pass he and Jaden got to figure out how to split up that touchdown ball because it's each of their first touchdown passes of their NFL careers for more on this and everything Washington Commanders check out the Locked On Commanders podcast five days a week part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. As Locked On uh, Commanders host and my Wednesday host, I heard that siren back there. I don't know what he had in that bag. And I don't know yeah, if he, they were if coming for the Bengals. For him. They're coming for yeah, the yeah. Bengals. Either that or somebody's stomach got messed up by some chili. But uh, I hope David made it out of there. All right, man. You know, we got them sirens going off. But no, seriously, Jaden Daniels just looks poised. He looks calm. He looks cool. Collected all of the things. I don't see it in Jacksonville that way so far in three or four years. And uh, you, you know what it's like to have Lamar. How does it look like, you know, Washington's chances of turning this franchise around really, really fast? It looks like it's actually going to get aided by the fact that this kid looks calm, cool, and he can also throw the ball down the field. Yeah, and he has all the tools, all the tools to be a superstar in this league. And obviously it's going to take some time. You know, this game was a great, hey, I'm here and, and I'm going to be something. You know, I think the expectations for him should be a couple of years down the line. We could see somebody that is taking the league by storm 
that Bengals defense isn't very good. I'll tell you that off the bat. I think they have a lot of work to do and they're in trouble because of it. But Jaden Daniels did what he was supposed to do, right? Good quarterbacks find ways to punish bad defenses. And Jaden Daniels looked dominant in that game. And I was super impressed because he, he was looking like a 10 year vet out there with some of his decisions and some of his throws, not a rookie quarterback, which we have seen over the course of this season. Wig, they're struggling. But Jaden Daniels, he broke that trend in a huge way. I'm glad you said that because we're going to get to Kayla Williams in just a second. But I was skeptical of Chris of Cliff Kingsbury. I really was. But most of that skepticism was because of him as a head coach, not a, a guy who's just uh, installing offense and dialing plays up. Uh, Cincinnati's defense actually looked good last week against Kansas City, and they probably should have won the game. But I think that the Lou Anamarumo's crew, they might just be built just to beat Cincinnati or be competitive against Cincinnati because you have to play the rest of the league. Now, you mentioned other rookie quarterbacks. Dan Orlovsky from ESPN took a beating when he said that he had Jaden Daniels QB1 over Caleb Williams. And you hear the word generational thrown around a lot. Um, I'm a living witness that if you don't insulate young people with the right coaching staff, and the right approach that things can really get screwed up. And I don't think Lauren Cox of Locked On Bears disagrees with me too much. Check this out. If the Chicago Bears couldn't get their offense going against that Indianapolis Colts defense, then it's hard to find hope that they're ever going to figure things out under offensive coordinator Shane Waldron. I'm Lauren Cox, host of the Locked On Bears podcast. And even though Caleb Williams had a more productive game in the Week 3 loss to the Colts, It was an ugly offense once again in a matchup that should have been tailor-made to get this side of the ball going. The Colts have the worst run defense in the NFL, and DeAndre Swift still averaged less than two yards per carry. Plus, you add in some very strange play calls in the red zone that left a lot of points on the board for the Chicago Bears, and you're left wondering when they're ever going to be able to figure this out around Caleb Williams, despite so many great weapons they've put on the field for him. Williams making some mistakes of his own, but not feeling like he's being put in the best position to be successful. They have invested on the offensive line. They've obviously invested in the skill positions, but they didn't invest in a plan to first run the football and protect their young quarterback. And I think Lauren's on to something, man. A lot of organizations ruin quarterbacks before quarterbacks ruin organizations. And this is honestly a trend that we're seeing, Wig, where organizations will throw quarterbacks into the fire. And there was no doubt Caleb Williams was going to be starting week one. You know, that's a guy that the Bears had nobody else. And and that's a player that you're going to get in there as your franchise quarterback. But the trend over the course of the last handful of seasons has been You throw guys in with lackluster, either it's weapons, offensive line, coaching staff, and you expect them to be great right off of the bat. And in reality, the the jump from college to the NFL for any position is hard. The jump from college to the NFL for quarterbacks is astronomical. And so despite how great these prospects are, I think everybody saw what C.J. Stroud did last year in Houston. And that's kind of like, oh, well, teams like if I draft a quarterback, I'm going to be able to get the next C.J. Stroud, and he's going to go out there and ball out. And he and that's that's 100% what's going to happen. C.J. Stroud is, is not the norm. That rookie mm-hmm. season was not the norm. The norm is you go through things, you struggle a bit, especially if the organization around you isn't completely sound. And so we see this now. Zach Wilson gets thrown into the fire with not great weapons and the coaching staff that wasn't sure, and all of a sudden – you know, he's off in Denver now. Desmond Ritter is a second round pick even in Atlanta. There's an example of this where he gets thrown in and that coaching staff was awful. And he had the weapons were there, but the coaches staff didn't know what to do with them. Now he's in Arizona. So these teams aren't giving the quarterbacks either the right stuff around them or they're giving up on them too early. And it's resulted in just all of these failed quarterback projects where you just wonder what would happen with one or one and a half more years of organizations just waiting it out and not having to win right away with someone who's clearly not ready? Meanwhile, teams like Pittsburgh, Minnesota, and Tampa, they're enjoying your cast off first round quarterbacks and they're absolutely finding ways to win. And the teams that let those team, those players go, they're still struggling at the same position. It leads you to believe maybe it's not the player, maybe it's y'all. So, We're going to talk about uh, the Buffalo Bills, and I thought they had stripped their roster down 
to hurt their quarterback. But now I now believe that their quarterback, Josh Allen, is the leading candidate for MVP. And I think the Bills might be the best team in the AFC and maybe in the entire NFL. I'll tell you all about it here on Locked On NFL. Not before I let you know about LinkedIn Talent Solutions, man. If you ever built a small business up, you know how hard it is to staff a, a company while you're paying attention to contractors and permits. Trust me, I've done it and it was terrible. When you're hiring for small businesses, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you are definitely looking in the wrong place. Here's what you do. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Segment number two here on Locked On NFL, where is your team every day? We thank you for making us your first, or maybe in this case, your second listen, because you'd have been listening to local all day. Uh, if you listen to local in Buffalo, you're happy, because the Bills absolutely skull drug the team that I cover on national TV last night and flat out embarrassed them. And not only that, they changed the narrative, O Striker, because I was one of those people that thought the Bills – window is closed and Joe Marino locked on bills has something that he wants to tell people like me. Shame on you. If you thought the Buffalo bills window to compete was over and you didn't understand the reasons for the roster turnover going in to the 2024 season. I'm Joe Marino host of the locked on bills podcast coming to you right now after the bills dismantle the Jacksonville Jaguars 47 to 10. On Monday Night Football, Josh Allen, the offensive catalyst for the Buffalo Bills, over 300 yards of offense, four touchdowns. The Bills score six touchdowns by six different players, showing you the everybody eats mentality of this operation. It's not about any one guy. It's about the depth of the roster. It's about a team that is not game script dependent, that can beat you in a number of ways. And oh, by the way, the defense is humming with splash plays left and right. The Bills' funeral, a little bit too early, folks. They're here, they're real, and they're a contender. I feel like uh, Marino was talking to me. I feel like he was looking dead in my face, and he was talking to me, man, with all the crap I gave Buffalo. I even picked him to finish last in the AFC East. So uh, I'll admit that I'm eating crow, but I am very, very impressed with what they're doing in Buffalo. Before I get to Jacksonville, let me hear your comments on what you just heard Marino say. Yeah, I'll I'll admit it too. I, I was out on Buffalo. Not that the window was closed forever, obviously, with Josh Allen, but I was like, maybe this is a bit of a reset year for Buffalo, yeah, where they you yeah. know they let a lot of vet talent go, and right. Stephon Diggs is out the door, and you're bringing in guys like Curtis Samuel and Keon Coleman. You're like, all right, maybe look, maybe they'll be like a seven seed or something, or just miss the playoffs. Then next year they'll go out there, let's say get T Higgins, and then they'll be back on the train and they'll be rolling. But man. I've, I've been every bit as impressed as Joe has, as you are, Wig, with this team. I mean, they, they're a buzzsaw right now. And the biggest test for them comes up on Sunday night in a big matchup with Baltimore. We're going to see how it all plays out in that game. That's going to be a good one. But right now, this Buffalo team, offensively, defensively, is just steamrolling, steamrolling opponents. And... Man, you got to look at them as one of the top threats in the league, and and I'm I'm happy for them because I know there was a lot of talk about how they fell off a cliff and they weren't going to do anything this year, but here they are. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm not happy. I'm not. It's not. It has nothing to do with Buffalo. Uh, so I used the clip to to get to what I really want to talk about. Those are the awful Jaguars. They, uh, if I, you know what it's like. Well, you know, we Baltimore had a Super Bowl winning coach that they replaced once, and Brian Billy. Right. So that doesn't happen very often. Right. Uh, in this case, I think it's going to happen. Doug Peterson is awful. They've scored 40 points in three games. They gave up more points last night than they've scored all year with a touchdown to boot. Trent Baalke is terrible as the GM. And uh, I would not be surprised if they're fired. In fact, 
The only thing that we're holding out on hope is, is that they're not worse than the Titans because they're one of three teams along with the Titans and the Bengals, which is a huge surprise. They haven't won a game yet. Tyler Rowland seems like he is down. You can find a madman early uh, on the first edition of the Double Dose of Locked On NFL. But no, he covers the Titans too. And let me tell you what he said. Check this out. What is there to say, folks? Just an absolute disgrace of a game for the Tennessee Titans. I mean, Will Levis played poorly, but he wasn't alone. It wasn't all on Will Levis. The offensive line gave up the most sacks in an NFL game this year with eight. The defense, the tackling in the first half. It was like the Titans defense didn't know that Malik Willis liked to run. I mean, it was just absurd. Um, Brian Callahan has egg on his face as well. But at the end of the day, we all just have to accept that this Tennessee Titans team may not be very good. And there may not be a lot of wins this year. And that is disappointing, no doubt about it. On the other hand, I got to say, I'm sorry, Malik Willis. I'm wrong. I was wrong. Malik looked good. Now, with all that being said, I know I typically have my content out ASAP. I'm unable to record here at the hotel, but I'm going home to record the episode. It'll be out probably 11 midnight, and you'll have it tomorrow morning. Look, I obviously took that from the other day, but I had to bring it up because, one, the team that I cover uh, is, is, is terrible. But – it's a double slap in the face to, for your quarterback to be an embarrassment and you get embarrassed by the dude you thought he was better than you ran him out of town. And then that kid comes back after only being gone two weeks and has the game of his life against the people who didn't want him. Yeah, this is a double slap in the face for me, too, because one, I at this point, I'm, I'm going to put the blame on, on me for this, for the AFC South and what the heck's going on over there right now, because I said, oh, this is going to be one of the best divisions in football. And man, it, it is not looking that way so far through three weeks. But I was like, hey, man, this Titans team, Will Levis can take that jump. They, they have the weapons around them. If that defense can step up and the defense has been bad, Will Levis has been worse. He's taken a step back. And Brian Callahan is a first time head coach here. Not having a lot of fun so far with uh, what we thought was going to be maybe one of the one of the dark horses in this AFC. At least I thought it was. So, man, it's, that would be like essentially an, on a much larger scale for me. If the Ravens had traded Lamar away to, let's say, Atlanta or somebody, Indy or yeah. somebody, and then he just beats up on you for the next 10 years or something. Obviously, that's Jordan Love's team over there in Green Bay. But. To have Malik Willis do that literally like the week or the week after you trade him away, man, that that that's cold blood of revenge right there. And uh, for Malik, I'm it happy is. for him too. It is. Now, uh, imagine Malik Willis and Derrick Henry calling each other on the phone saying, hey, you see what's, what they, they didn't want us no more, man. The, both of these dudes have lights out games this weekend and the Titans are sitting down there. They, uh, last week, Callahan, the coach, somebody asked him something at a press conference and he pulled the he's a grown he's a grown man. <laughs> Never heard a coach say, what are you talking about? He's a grown man. He makes his own decisions. I ain't got to be sitting there. I, I thought that was telling, and I think they're in trouble. And that's one of those situations now where a team isn't screwing up the, the quarterback. We can tell the difference. The quarterback just isn't very good, and he's going to always just be who he's always going to be, and I think the coach realizes that too. All right, there's some really, really good young receivers. But just like Caleb Williams was everybody's darling, and rightfully so, Marvin Harris Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. has been very, very good, but Malik Neighbors is like, hold on, making me look at Brian Kelly real crazy with how good both of these LSU players are playing early in their careers. We'll talk about that in just a second here on Locked On NFL. First thing I got to let you know about is FanDuel, man. Our sponsor for today, FanDuel, is. They are so reliable, man. They are the absolute truth. And other than the games being played, my favorite part of football season is FanDuel because they're the America's number one sports book, right? When you get a hunch in the middle of the game that things are turning, normally, you, you know, well, I didn't bet on it. Well, guess what? That's not a problem. You can check out the latest stats, view live, play by play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. All you got to do is get started with FanDuel, man. You're going to get $200 in bonus bets when you do the following. This is the, Listen now. You make your first $5 bet. Let me do the math. 
$200 in bonus bets and you make one $5 bet and you ain't even got to win. Just make the bet. That's what's going on at FanDuel.com. It is America's number one sports book. I have so much fun. Make your games so much fun. If your team losing and you can win some money, then it'll at least make you feel a little bit better. So go on over to FanDuel, get the $200 in bonus bets when you make a $5 bet. All right, third segment here on Locked On NFL, where it's your team every day. We appreciate you making us your first or second listen. And you know what? Tune in tomorrow morning and check out Tyler Rowland, the madman. That's right. Double dose of NFL espresso early in the morning before you get your double dose by tuning in with him. And then you're coming over here with me in the barbershop in the middle of the day, like where you are right now, right? I'm Tony Wiggins, the barber, and he is Tyler Rowland, the madman. Make sure you make Locked On NFL your stop on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. All right, KO, man, here's the deal. You hear so much about rookie receivers. Well, y'all don't. Oh, boy, y'all never holly draft. Y'all get, did get Trey Flowers last year, uh, Zay Flowers last year. So, uh, But these rookies are showing off. And there's a lot of draft pr prognosticators that thought Malik Neighbors was just as good or better than Marvin Harrison Jr. I personally was like, uh, I don't know because I always go for the bigger player. But, man, he, he actually got Brian Dabo. I was talking about Doug Peterson being in the, in, in the doghouse. Well, Dabo was there after week one and week two. Listen to what my girl Patricia Trainer said about this victory this weekend that neighbors had an awful lot to do with. The New York Giants facing an 0-3 start and possible extinction of their 2024 season banded together to deliver one of their best performances in some time, topping the Cleveland Browns 21-15. The Giants' defense, which drew all kinds of heat from last week's struggles against Washington Commanders, delivered eight sacks of on Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson and 17 quarterback hits as defensive coordinator Shane Bowen was far more aggressive this week than he's been so far this season. On offense, that Daniel Jones, the late neighbor's connection is looking pretty good these days. The rookie caught eight of 12 balls for 78 yards in both of Jones's touchdown throws. New York overcoming a potential catastrophe on the opening kickoff when Eric Gray lost the handle on the ball and the Browns cashed in for the first points of the day. The Giants now one and two won't have much time to celebrate their win as in four days they'll host the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday Night Football at MetLife Stadium. Keep it here for all things Giants. I had Dabo fired uh, a week ago, two weeks ago. Uh, Malik Neighbors looked like the real deal, doesn't he? 100%. This this is a guy that everybody knew had the talent, but it's just a matter of him going to New York, you know, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is loving Malik Neighbors right now. He Those throws, and Daniel Jones had a couple of good ones, but the electricity that Neighbors has, he, he's all over the place. They use him in a bunch of different roles too, which I think is the coolest part of this whole thing, is he's, he's not just a, a guy that can do one thing. He can do all sorts of things on the field that you can use him as a, as a rusher on reverses. You can use him out wide. You can use him in a slot, you can do everything as a three-level receiver. And we knew that that draft class had some talent up towards the front in terms of wide receivers. And a lot of people expected those Los Angeles Chargers to take Malik Neighbors. They went with Joe Walt instead, who, again, has looked awesome. Don't get me wrong. But the Giants kind of had Malik Neighbors fall right into their lap. And is a number one franchise guy, you know, the first guy since Odell, who, by the way, we know where Odell went to college, don't we, Wig? LSU. Yep. They love their LSU receivers, and it uh, looks like this one paid off for him, too. It absolutely paid off for him, and, and I'm not saying – I'm not ready to say he'll be better than Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. has absolutely been as good as advertised. Um, down here, uh, Brian Thomas Jr., another LSU guy. There we go. He, uh, he has played well. Keon Coleman even caught uh, his first touchdown last night, so the wide receiver class as a whole – is looking good now with Tua Tagovailoa's injury. There's been a lot of speculation that if the Rams' season continued to go the way it was, the way it was spiraling with all of their injuries, and them being winless, that maybe Matthew Stafford would have been a target for a team that, outside of the injured quarterback, looks like they have a pretty, pretty good team. But Lockdown Rams has something else to say about that. Evidently, they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> 
He ain't going nowhere. The Los Angeles Rams not only saved their season on Sunday with a dramatic 27-24 come-from-behind win over the San Francisco 49ers, they may have just avoided a rebuild. Since 1970, there have been 218 teams that have gotten off to 0-3 starts, and of those teams, just five have made the playoffs. With 4.57 left to go in the fourth quarter, the Rams had a 4.5% chance of winning. They were staring down the barrel of an 0-3 start. You had pundits throughout the week suggesting the Rams should trade Matthew Stafford. Well, guess what? The Rams are not punting on the 2024 season. Today, it was a next man up mentality. Stafford was great. Kyron Williams was great, but also guys like Tutu Atwell stepping up in the absence of Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. He ends up with 93 yards, catching four of his five targets, had the big 50-yard over-the-shoulder catch that led to the game-tying touchdown the fourth. And it just goes to show, when you have a great coach and a great quarterback, you always have a chance, but the Rams, they are not punting on the 2024 season. Well, good for them. You know what? They they won a game last night, unlike my team. Your team won a game in week three, and now everybody can stand up and have something to be positive about. If, if there's one team that can find a way through injuries and through a whole bunch of adversity, it is Les Snee's L.A. Rams, and, and, and I got to give him and Coach McVay a whole bunch of credit for keeping that thing glued together. Yeah. And again, it's just a matter of surviving till your guys get back. And it's been a rough go of things early for the Rams in terms of guys going down. Obviously, you need players such as Demarcus Robinson, Doug mentioned Tutu Atwell in, in that short there, and others like Tyler Johnson in your receiving group as you wait for, for Puka and Cooper Cup to come back. But we know that with this team, Kyron Williams is a stud. And as long as he's out there, the Rams can at least run the ball. I know the offensive line has been decimated as well over there in Los Angeles. So you're just kind of wondering, like, if it breaks, what will be the last, the final straw for them? But that was a resilient effort. Sometimes teams need something like that. We're sure you might not have all your stars and you're waiting on guys to get back on the field for you. But if you can kind of survive in advance for these next couple of weeks and stay just in competitive reach, of these top NFC teams or obviously for the division, they have a shot. And so, no, I, I wouldn't go trading Matthew Stafford. Obviously, 0-3 is a different conversation, but 1-2 and two feels a whole lot better than 0-3, especially when you talk about the stats that are behind it. It absolutely feels better, and it does – a lot for the organization. I'm sure they might have entertained. They might, maybe they would have entertained it had they gone 0 and 3 or 0 and 4. But with them showing the gusto and with them showing the, you know what, we ain't done yet mentality. It, it, what it also does, man, and I hate to to be this guy. It 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 shows these other teams that, it, like Jacksonville, like the one I cover. It, it what's your excuse? These guys are banged up and, and they're missing their top two receivers that are all world and they they win and they beat the 49ers and the 49ers played them and they can't even make excuses because the Rams are just as banged up as them. Bad teams uh, find a way to just continue to be bad and good teams find a way to be good even when bad things happen. Uh, bad things don't happen to you for tuning in and locked on NFL twice a day. Tyler Rowland in the morning, Tony Wiggins in the lunchtime in the afternoon. A double dose of Locked On NFL. Make sure you tap in every single day. Kevin Ostracker will be back with us next Tuesday, as as he always is. I thought it was Wednesday last week. I don't know if you caught that. <laughs> I said he's tomorrow, Wednesday. I'm like, no, nah, it's Tuesday. My man Kevin Ostracker, we appreciate you joining us. You can catch him out and check him out on Locked On Ravens every single day, where it's your team every day. And then slide on over here to Locked On NFL to make sure you check us out. Until next time, man, y'all take care of each other. We'll see you later.